Hello, everybody. Welcome to Tactical Fundraising Action 2, presented by Metal Gear Speedrunners. I'm going to be uh, streaming for the next few runs. My name's Plywood. I'm an admin here at MGSR, and I hope you have a wonderful time watching. We're going to be starting the stream off with Metal Gear Solid 3 by Jaguar King. He'll be playing on European Extreme Difficulty. And then afterwards, we will be having Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, New Game Plus Hard by Iridescence MGS. TFA2 is in support of Pythonicus, who is an MGSR member dealing with a move. So we'll be trying to raise money for him. If you are interested in helping out, please go to streamlabs.com forward slash Pythonicus. We'll be getting started here in just 30 seconds. Hello everyone, welcome. I'm Jaguar King, nice to meet you all and welcome everybody for the tactical fundraising action two. And already we have some two dollar donation. Welcome everyone. Hello, I'm Jaguar King and I'm gonna do Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater on PlayStation 3. And we're gonna start in a little bit and uh, before we start, um, yeah, you know what, let's just get started, let's not waste any more time. So yeah, this is going to be Metal Gear Solid 3, uh, we're going to play this on European Extreme, like always. We're going to choose I like MGS1 because I truly like MGS1. And we're going to go with European Extreme, the hardest difficulty because go hard or go home. Yeah, welcome everyone, and let's get started in 3, 2, 1, go! Let's get this marathon started. And I'm quite honorable to be the first guy to start this marathon. So, yeah, so. After the end of World War II, the world was split into two, East and West. This marked the beginning of the era called the Cold War. Yep, Cold War. So, I'm playing this game on the HD collection on PlayStation 3, which was released back in 2011. It's by far the best option so far, other than like buying the Android and buy that game. So yeah, it's the second best option. So we play as Naked Snake, aka previous or past Big Boss, and our goal is to save a scientist by the name of Sokolov, uh, who is actually the maker of the Metal Gear Shagahod here. <coughs> So, I just picked up the pack pack, and we're going to do some lore stuff here. There are going to be a bunch of cutscenes of Kodak Conversation, because that's a Metal Gear game. What do you expect? You're, we're going to skip all through all of these. Thankfully, the Kodak Conversations, all you have to do is just hold triangle and skip that. Eat your heart out, MGS1. Yeah, no need for any kind of mashing. So... This is actually, this HD collection, this HD uh, version of the game is based on the Subsistence version, which was released back in 2006. And it has some features. One of them is that there's two camera types. The first one is the, this is the Snake Eater camera. And we have the Subsistence camera, which is pretty much a free camera. 
and allow you to move snake or move the camera in a preferable way and we're gonna like switch between the two camera mode throughout the rest of the game as there are certain stats uh, strats requires do certain camera angle so yeah <clears throat> so we're gonna encounter our first guard in the game and we're gonna have to take him down and there's a strat that is called here quick headshot and we're gonna do this right at the bat I'm gonna stand right here aim shoot and he's down so basically you aim and then you go into first person mode you press R2 and L2 to level up a little bit and uh, shoot immediately uh, and you will be able to do a quick headshot you're gonna see me do this multiple times during the run unfortunately it will not work with every guard in the game as there are some rules uh, that need to be applied here first of all you need to be at the same level of terrain as the guard that you're trying to shoot or else it will not work or you you will end up missing the shot for example this one it will work i'm gonna stand right here shoot this guy walk a little bit and the other one is missed this is a good example of this happening but that's okay so i'm gonna try and shoot this guy here and then we're gonna continue forward yeah nothing happening everything is fine we're good so we're playing on European Extreme, and uh, it's pretty much Extreme difficulty, with the exception is that in European Extreme, uh, your ga game will pretty much game over the moment you get spotted by an enemy. Everything else is pretty much the same thing as Extreme difficulty, unlike MGS2, where there are some differences between European Extreme and Extreme difficulty. So here I'm going to do a quick hit shot to snipe this guy here, and then we're going to continue forward. And then there's going to be a guard coming up here, I'm going to shoot two bullets on him, and as he climbing down the ladder, he's going to fall asleep, and then I'm going to have to roll into this guy before he spots me, and then right to this door, and this is where we're going to meet Sokolov, the Russian scientist that we need to save. And here we will meet a bunch of ocelots, and they are pretty much proud creatures. They can... yeah. Yeah, that's one of them, sleeping on the floor here. So we're gonna have to backtrack all the way to the bridge that we actually passed on. And this is where we're gonna get one of the top 10 enemy betrayals. Uh, as we're gonna pretty much get betrayed by our mentor. And in the end, we're gonna. Our arm is gonna end up getting broken. So, yeah. So, here's the mechanic on this game. We're gonna pretty much. Uh, we're gonna heal Snake here. Yeah, perform a little surgery. By applying badges, uh, septics, and disinfect, splits, and stutures. And. By doing so, this will pretty much conclude the whole game. I mean, sorry, I mean, virtuous mission. And then we're going to start the Snake Eater mission. We're going to start some eating some snakes on the way. So... Now we start the mission, we're gonna continue through the same areas as we did. But this time it's gonna be in the darkness, in the middle of the night. And we're pretty much equipped with the pistol, but we're not gonna even need to use that as we're gonna lose it in a little bit. And by the way, Snake have, is now have a bandana, and which is a little bit cool. So, I'm actually like rolling... Uh, while climbing the some slopes here. It's actually faster than climbing them up. And we're gonna do this until we get the box. And here we're gonna meet our mentor again and ended up like destroying our weapon and now we're pretty much weaponless. So guards are coming closer and we need to move here. I'm gonna equip the stun grenades and we're gonna have to sneak in behind them. 
Here I'm gonna start cooking the grenade on my hand. This will silence my footsteps and allow me to sneak in behind that guard without getting spotted or without him listening to my footsteps, which is a big major mechanic in this game. And you're gonna see me do this multiple times during the run. So coming up is the first hard part of the run. I need to move at a specific time, uh, sorry, a specific line and do a roll into a bridge and it's not an easy thing to do. So I might get spotted here. And, and we got it. So yeah, this might look like easy, but trust me, it is way harder than it looks. Because there is one thing that you guys need to understand about this HD collection. The game run at 60 frames per second, and although 60 frames is cool and amazing in itself, uh, the original game runs at 30 FPS, so that's a major upgrade, but does not come without any problems or without any issues. For example, you can easily got, uh, get stuck between trees, wall, rocks, and uh, yeah, it can pretty much get annoying quite easily. So this is the same area that we met Sokolov, but before we go to the room that he has, we're going to go here and pick up the best, the best equipment in the game, the box. And we're going to use this box a lot here. So I'm going to enter and exit, and that's pretty much it on this area as we're gonna wait for our informant Adam or AK or Eva and she's gonna give us weapons and equipments that we're gonna need so coming up is the first big encounter in the game the ocelot unit and we're gonna have to take them down first of all I'm gonna equip all the weapons that Eva gave me the mark 22 to be exact and then I'm gonna shoot this guard right here it's really important to shoot him in his body if you shoot him anywhere else you're gonna get spotted. So there's this guy. I'm gonna shoot this guy here. And this guy here as well. And then I'm gonna throw a stun grenade. There are gonna be four guards outside. I'm gonna get them all stunned down. Controller, please. This is not the time for you to malfunction. And I'm gonna shoot this guy on top. Remember there was a guy outside. I'm gonna have to finish him off or else they're gonna get spotted. There he is. Okay, he's, he's now asleep. I'm gonna go here. They're gonna be guard all the way far. We got him, okay. That was actually a tricky shot. I'm gonna shoot the last one here, and that's the Ocelot unit. I'm gonna head straight to this area to finish this whole sequence. Yeah, welcome everyone. I, I can see you on the chat, but unfortunately I cannot interact with you right now. So yeah, I need to focus on this run. So here's the bug juice, and we're going to do some menuing here. We're going to equip the box and the bug juice that we just picked up here. And then remove the cigar and the binoculars, as we're not going to need them in the run. Yeah, go for it. We have $2 from a Mir Gettel, not a Metal Gear, a Mir Gettel, saying, First, colon D, thank you so much for your donation. Yeah, you can go in and read some donations, Plywood. Okay. <laughs> okay, thanks. Thanks all for all your donations. Uh, yeah, Pythonicus is a family member. He's a member of our family in the community, and we definitely look at each other in our community. So I just use the bug juice in order to move uh, through the lake, because if we do not do so, leech is going to end up leeching onto you, and then you're going to end up losing a lot of stamina, and we need the stamina in this game. Speaking of the stamina here, uh, a mechanic, a new mechanic in this game, requires you to refill your stamina every now and then by eating food. And on this run, thankfully we did not need to do so. Uh, Snake, what are you doing? Okay, that was weird. I, th I might screw this up. Let's see. Okay, there's... I might get spotted at the end of this area because I took too much time here. So speaking of the stamina, we're going to have to eat from every now and then. Thankfully, this route does not require you to eat anything, uh, as we're going to pick up the animal camouflage later. So I might get spotted here. Yeah. 
That's unfortunate. But that's okay. Yeah, this is this is a side effect of the 60 frames per second. Movements can be really, really finicky, and there's nothing you can do about it. Okay. Alright. <laughs> I don't know what the hell was that. For some reason, the first bullet did not get... Uh, hit into the wall, because I need to shoot the wall in front of me f to make the dog bark, and this will move three guards on top of the area and allow me to sneak in pretty much easily without getting spotted. Okay, we should be fine. Here's a fence. Alright, and now we're outside of this area. So, back to speaking to stamina. Um, yeah, uh, the lower the stamina, the more inaccurate Snake's aim become, actually. So, you need to refill your stamina meter so you can get Snake to shoot accurately. As I said before, thankfully you do not need to do that, as because we're going to pick up the animal camouflage from beating us a lot non-lethally. And any side effects from the low stamina bar that we have were pretty much nullified thanks to the animal camouflage. So this is the first boss of the game, Ocelot. I'm gonna shoot him right in the back, throw a stun grenade, turn around so he doesn't end up getting blinded, shoot him again, throw another stun grenade, turn around, he's gonna shoot me, and then I'm gonna shoot this goat, I'm gonna shoot him again. He's gonna look at his deer goat and he's gonna get pissed, shoot his hat. Shoot him again, one more shot left. And they're gonna he's laugh at me, but I actually beat him. So we have beaten Ocelot non-lethally. We're gonna pick up the animal camouflage or the uniform. And we're not gonna use it just right now, as we're gonna pretty much uh, we're gonna use it later into the run after the Granin uh, facility. So, we're inside the cave. Everything looks dark to you, but don't worry, because I have my monitor brightness maxed out. So, I can pretty much see everything and where I need to go. So, yeah, you, the, developer, the developers in this game pretty much intended you to go through this area. Um, in the dark, but uh, the idea is here that you need to wait for Snake's eyes to get adjusted to darkness, or you pretty much go in and start looking for a torch. Uh, thankfully, we do not need to do any of that, as we pretty much like use the brightness of your monitor to go through this area easily. So coming up is actually one of the hardest boss fights in this game, the pain, and he is such a pain, just like his name pretty much applies. Pick up some items here, and then we're gonna equip them immediately. We're gonna equip the grenade that we just picked up at the lake, and the smoke grenades, and we're gonna need them for this particular boss fight. The problem with the pain here is that you need to beat him as fast as possible, and the fact that he armors himself up every now and then so first, I'm gonna use the smoke grenade. Hopefully this will not bounce into him. It did not. And then I'm gonna try and shoot him in his head, and which is easier said than done. And then we're gonna throw a grenade at him to destroy his armor. Okay, that's the first phase. Um, second phase is gonna be the same thing. We're gonna use a grenade at him to destroy his armor. Pick up some ammo. He armored himself up, which which is fine. I'm gonna use another grenade. Ah, you asshole. It's okay, we're gonna use a smoke grenade here. Wow, that was such a clutch fight. So to explain how hard this boss fight can be is that the pain pretty much armor himself up with his bees and in order to nullify the armor 
We need to use a grenade. The problem though, after nullifying his armor, uh, we need to shoot his head as fast as possible. We need to deal damage to him as fast as possible or else he's gonna pretty much armor himself up again. The problem is that if you try to shoot his head, it's not as easy as you guys think because he's actually waving his head right and left and every time we try to aim at him with the first person it's not really that easy to be honest because we need to do some quick uh, shots with the mark 22 by unequipping and equipping equipping it by pressing r2 the problem however if you're in first person view and you press r2 or l2 snake will end up striving to the right with the r2 or left whoa what the f what the hell was that Okay, I don't know what the hell was that, but I have never seen him roll like that before, so... Okay, Snake, whatever. He just went out of bound. So yeah, the problem with going for into first person view and pressing R2, Snake will end up strafing to the right and... <laughs> uh, make this whole aiming at him is quite harder than you guys think. And... Uh, yeah, it's pretty much pretty much handicapping yourself by doing so. So here we're pretty much uh, swimming into this lake. <laughs> yeah. I have never seen that glitch before. So here is another boss fight coming up. Thankfully that boss fight is not gonna attack us, but we're gonna deal some damage to him. Which is the end. First of all, we're gonna shoot this guy in front of us, and I'm gonna equip the pistol, and I'm gonna shoot the barrel here. Shoot these two barrels. As you can see, that's the end, and I have dealt some damage to him, some health damage to him, actually. And this is pretty much quite important, as by the time we pretty much fight the end later, his stamina bar will be lowered, which allow us to uh, one cycle him before he escapes. So this is the warehouse. This warehouse is notorious for losing a lot of run thanks to a tricky jump that I need to do or a roll to be exact. Okay, we did it. I'm gonna wait a little bit. Okay, that was my fault. I was moving too fast and I did not adjust, so that's okay. I got the hard part, but I messed up the easy part. I'm gonna keep that gonna keep that in mind again. So, we're gonna roll. Okay, now we continue forward. I might be really, really slow here. Hopefully I can make this make it before this guy see me. And I was late. That's okay. Yeah, unfortunately, warehouse is, is one of the hard areas in this game. And it might look simple, but trust me, it is not. As you need to move really, really fast as well. So I'm gonna wait here for a little bit. Okay, now we can continue forward. We're gonna use the box to move as fast as possible. This is where the true power of the box shows up. Every time you climb up a ladder or a slope or anything, you can pretty much move in as fast as possible. So I'm not rolling into this guard and then pretty much using the box immediately. And this is the area. So now we're going to continue through this uh, dangerous forest or jungle. Uh, there's a trap. This right in front of me, it's important not to activate this trap. As we're going to need it for the next boss fight coming up soon. So there's going to be a guard and a dog here. And we need to do some headshot to this guard. And it's easier said than done for some reason. This particular guard is not cooperating sometimes. Sometimes, like, even when you shoot him, if you mess up the shot or shoot him anywhere in his body, he will look at you and then you're going to get spotted. So this is Gran in lap, and uh, we need to go and meet Gran in here as he's going to give us a key in order to access the part of the warehouse that we cannot access any <laughs> access at the first visit and here we're gonna 
use the scientist uniform that Eva gave us to us when we got met by her earlier in the game. This will allow us to go through this area without getting spotted by any of the guards. However, the scientist on this area will pretty much recognize that you are not one of them and he will cause an alert, thus gaming over. And of course, you can pretty much annoy these guards. There is nothing they can do, they can yell at you. So, an important strat here. It's really important to pretty much bump into that scientist, because if you do not do so, he's gonna see you, and then he's gonna cause an alert, and then game over. So by bumping into him, you will pretty much, like, uh, delay the alert a little bit until you touch the trigger which will load the cutscenes to the meeting Granim. And here I'm going to use the box, and I'm going to unequip the box the moment that guard starts moving in. Yeah, it's using the box here is really, really precise, and if you messes up... Nice. If you ended up messing that up, uh, you're going to get spotted by either the scientist or the enemy, the guard as well. So yeah, uh, the moment the scientist looks at you, this is where you're going to equip the box. This will pretty much delay or prevent his alert. But the soldier will see your box and then he's going to come to investigate. The moment he's going to start moving in, this is where you need to unequip the box. Yeah, the timing is quite precise, but once you know the timing for it, it's actually not that bad. So here we're going to equip the animal uniform that we picked up by beating Ocelot non-lethally. Then we're going to exit the Granin lab. I'm going to roll down here. And then I'm going to shoot this guy. Oh, come on. Oh, there we go. Then I'm going to equip the stun grenade in preparation for the next boss fight, the fear. Yeah, that doggo is pretty much chilling. Oh, okay. I got stuck between the... on the corner here. I remind you this game runs at 60 FPS and that's what caused me getting stuck like that. So yeah. But that's okay, we're gonna do this again. So yeah, you need to move in this area quite fast or else the guards on the far side of the lab will spot you. So yeah, you're not supposed to get stuck here. But it does happen. What can you do? So coming up is the fear and there's an interesting strat that we're gonna have to do against him. We're gonna use the trap that he planted here against him. So at first we're gonna go in to the trap that I just talked about. I'm gonna roll, turn around, I'm gonna use the fake death pill. And then I'm gonna wait for him to come to investigate. And then I'm gonna wait for him until he starts moving in. Use the revival bill. Wow. Okay, that was not supposed to happen. So I'm gonna have to start the fight again. So for some reason, apparently he did not see me as I wake up. And uh, it does happen sometimes based on his spawn in. This actually happened and yeah, it was a little bit of RNG because he was supposed to stop the moment you start rising up. So he's behind me, so that's much, much preferred. Yeah, that's what's supposed to happen. I'm going to use the stun grenade. And that's it. And that's the fear. Oh, whoa, what the? He did not die. Hello? Why are you not dead? Seriously, he's not dead! 
How did that happen? I have never seen that happen. He's... He... Okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah. This run has become really, really weird so far. So now we have beaten the fear, and we're going to equip some stuff. The cigar gas spray, and they're going to heal ourselves with the poison that he have. That he done at us. That was weird. I have never seen him survive. I mean, his stamina was zero. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, never happened before. I have never seen that happen before. I swear to God. Huh? So we're back in the Hedware's house again. We're gonna drop into this guy's head. And I'm gonna shoot this wall. Then we're gonna continue. Shoot this guy, knock him over. What happened? Huh? Yep, footsteps. Yeah, welcome everyone. So now we're gonna continue through the run. Yeah, this one has been quite weird so far. <laughs> So this is Eva telling us there's going to be a boss coming up. A boss with the 100-year-old boss, which his name is The End, and we're going to have to fight him. So this area, you need to move at a specific pace. Not too fast, but not too slow. If you're moving too fast, you're going to get spotted. If you're moving too slow, you're going to get spotted, and... Yeah. So... First, we're going to knock this guy out. I'm going to aim. Shoot here. This guy's going to run behind the street. Going to call for backup. I'm going to equip the box. Continue forward. I'm going to equip also the cigar gas spray. And... Uh, we're going to knock this guy down. And then continue forward. And we're going to knock this guy down with the cigar gas spray. And this is the area. So, coming up is the end, and he is the end. He can pretty much end you in, <laughs> in our ways that could not be possible, I guess. So here I'm going to use the smoke grenade, throw it at that specific location. This will mask my movement, and he will not be able to shoot me as I approach him. He is on top of this rock. Or this small mountain, I guess. And we're gonna sneak right behind him. So, the end is actually a quite dangerous boss. Especially for a marathon run. And if you remember my AGDQ 2018 run, you know what he can actually do. The problem with the end is that he does not kill you. No, he doesn't, he doesn't kill you. He's the only boss where you cannot game over by him unless you kill yourself because he sh deals to you stamina damage and in order to knock you down and then he can and he will take you all the way back to the granite facility and you have no choice but to load a save file and f try and fight him again so we're gonna approach him here we're gonna use the cigar gas spray ah! and then we're gonna freeze him freeze huh? Uh, did you I'm gonna focus on this part a little bit. Cigar gas spray. I'm gonna use the stun grenade. It's really important to hit the grenade itself into his body. Yeah, the idea is you need to keep him on stun lock. And then we're gonna use the smoke grenade. Alright. There we go. We did not get that troll pixel. So yeah, there is a certain frame that where the end will pretty much uh, survive the the final uh, few hits, uh, which will end ended up being uh, ended up him being living by a single pixel, and it did happen to my AGDQ 2018 run. And thankfully, we did not get that frame, so we can continue through the run quite easily. I'm actually quite low on ammo, so this could be a 
problem. I guess no, we're fine, we're fine. Yeah, I barely have enough because there are gonna be three soldiers that we need to take down and uh, yeah. So, uh, if there are any donations to read, now it's the good time, yeah. We have five dollars from Underwater Smoking, who will actually be running a game on Sunday, Clock Tower 2. It's not much, but I hope it helps. Best of luck in life, Pythonicus. Five dollars. Thank you so much, man. Well, thank you, Plywood. Truly appreciate it. Thanks for all the people who donated. I gave my donation for Pythonicus, not for me. That was bad. I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna qu be quiet. So that was the ladder boss, the infamous ladder boss in the game. So we're coming up on the one of the hardest areas in the game, the mountain areas. Uh, it's three areas, and uh, the first two are pretty much easy. The third one is the worst, actually. So here, uh, there are two guards that I need to take down, and we need to move at a specific line and. Shoot this first guard here, and then we're gonna start rolling down. And we're gonna shoot this guy, knock him down. I have one more bullet, which is gonna be for this guard coming up here. So yeah, we barely have enough for this. But don't worry, we're gonna pick up ammo in a little bit. So here I'm gonna hold square, and then I'm gonna... Let go. This will take down the guy on top of the mountain, this area here. Pick up some ammo on the way, and we're gonna pick up a stun grenade for the final boss of this game. And then we're gonna shoot this guy. And then we're gonna continue climbing up this mountain, this massive mountain. Here I unequip the box and roll equip it again, because this guard is gonna come in. And then we're gonna continue through the run. Shoutouts to this vulture. So yeah, uh, this is where the true power of the box pretty much shows up as you can really, really blast through this area. What's this box? Uh, okay. I'm gonna shoot these guys down. And then I'm removing the silencer from my for the pistol here for the Mark 22, and then I'm gonna head straight to the next area, which is the mountain top. It's by far the hardest area in the game, in my opinion, as we need to move quite fast, really, really fast. The problem is that you can easily get spotted right here. Okay, we're good. And then I'm gonna shoot here. Make some noise. This is HQ. So there's gonna be a guard coming up here and we need to move as fast as possible before he moves in. Okay, I was late. So, what happened here... I had to take another, sh uh, another area. A backup uh, movement strats because the guard on top did not listen to my shot here. 
so so he's supposed to hear the shot right now yeah he's coming in so we need to move as fast as possible and then I'm gonna roll down here and then roll and then we're gonna continue through this area and this is how you're supposed to do it so what happened before is that the guard for some reason did not hear the the shot and ended up moving as slow as possible and because of that if I ended up moving on the same route that I just did right now he's gonna spot me as I roll into the other side so we meet Eva again and she's gonna give us some stuff again so when we beat the end non-lethally we got the Mosin Nagant and I'm gonna equip it right now as we're gonna use this weapon for the upcoming boss fights uh, the Fury, and he is by far the most random boss in the game. So we're gonna head back to the uh, door underneath the mountaintop area. If you're playing the original Snake Eater game, uh, there's a glitch that allow you to clip through that door and pretty much skip meeting Eva altogether. So, yeah, uh, unfortunately, you cannot do it on the HD collection. You cannot do it in the subsistence version as well. It's only exclusive to the Snake Eater PS2 version of the game. Nice roll. So, coming up is the Fury, and Fury is by far the most random boss in the game. And uh, you're going to see why. In a little bit. Hopefully, we're gonna beat him first time, but I'm I'm not gonna hold my breath. So let's see. First of all, I need to locate where he's gonna end up uh, dropping down. So he went to the right. So I'm making some noise so he can move in closer. Wait. My flame suit is ripped. Okay, I'm dead. Oh wow, still alive. Son of a bitch. Oh my god, I did not see him. I thought he went on top of that. Uh... Yeah, let me do this again. Yeah, this boss fight is random, and his behavior is also random. So let's do this again. My shoot's been ripped. And this is how you beat the Fury. So what makes this fight so random is the fire that he actually shoot on the floor. And you can pretty much easily get um, hit by these fires and things can get so hectic and ended up dying to him. So yeah, the Fury, uh, his random, his behavior is random, his movement is random and... He is not a nice boss fight whatsoever. He's not a nice, nice boss. He can pretty much destroy your run quite easily thanks to his randomness. So, we have made it to the Grozny Grad and uh, we're gonna sneak in here. After beating the Fury, the game becomes significantly easy actually as uh, most of, the, most of the hard stuff are pretty much gone right now, and all you have to do is just focus on your movements, and you should be fine. So I'm shooting this guard, and I'm equipping the box right now, and for some reason this guard does not see there's a running box in front of him. He's pretty much concerned about his buddy falling asleep. He is so jealous of his buddy that he's actually falling asleep, and he's not, so yeah. So this is the Grozny Grand, uh, Grand, and we're gonna make some noise, we're gonna shoot immediately. Equip the box, we're gonna continue forward. This will make uh, this is HQ. What's going on? Rykov, the guy that we need to put down to sleep or knock down, call for backup. And 
we're gonna knock him down and we're gonna pick up his body uh, his uh, body here and we're gonna drag him all the way to the area uh, where we're gonna take his clothes off hey guys what's up your commander is with me There's a faster method to do so, but it's quite risky, and I really do not recommend it. This is the most consistent, safe method to do. Yeah, there's faster ways to take him down. So we're gonna equip the face, and you can pretty much look at Snake's face. He's pretty much tired from dealing with everything. We're gonna equip the face camouflage and Rykov's uniform, and then we're gonna continue th through the run. So yeah, Rykov looked familiar. Hmm. Interesting. So this is, this is the area we're gonna have to go and meet um, Sokolov, as Eva told us that Sokolov is actually inside of this facility where he's forced to continue working onto the Shagahod here. Sir. So, coming up is a bunch of cutscenes coming up here, and after that, they're gonna be a long, unskippable cutscene. So, so if there are any donations, if there are anything that you guys want to do, bathroom break, go for it. <laughs> Yeah, go Tell for it, me. pilot. Stop it. All right, Who so have we have ten dollars from Metal Gear Solid. We'll be doing a Metal Gear Solid you PC any percent talk. run Please. during this marathon tomorrow. Who is ten dollars. Cheers, guys. Split even among the save, kill, Meryl incentives for killing Meryl, because we gotta go faster. You have another ten dollars from Copper Tank. Another community member of MGSR. Wish we could donate more. Much love from Mr. and Mrs. Tank. Thank you so much. Again, if you would like to donate, you can type exclamation mark donate into the chat. And keep in mind that if you'd like to donate towards a bid war, just leave it in your comment. We have three bid wars for this marathon. Thank you all for your support. Have a great day. Thank you very much, Plywood. So, let's take a look at your body, shall we? Fun fact here. What a beautiful body you have, like a newborn baby. As you're hearing, um, uh, <laughs> Volgan saying that you have you have a beautiful body depends well, on how much, let's get uh, started. time you fight <laughs> and ended up getting alerts. What is your target? And die a lot against bosses, Is it the and ended up having like fighting with enemies and so on. Or the dialogue will change depending on how much damage you take. Answer me. Who is helping you? Who let you in here? You're a tough one, but even you must have your limits. And I am a patient man. Alright, so now we are inside the cell and we need to escape. So, first of all, we're gonna equip the fork in front of us as we're gonna have to use it. Then we're gonna open the cure and then we're gonna remove the bullets and the transmitter and the fake death bell here. And then we're gonna use it immediately. And here is Johnny, by the way. What happened? By using the fake death bell, Johnny's gonna come into. Investigate our body. The moment he exits, we're gonna revive ourselves, and I'm gonna equip the SAA and the cigar. And we're gonna sneak behind him, doing some melee damage. Two, pu two regular punches and three punches with the weapon on our hand. This will pretty much knock him down. And then we're gonna take all the goodies on his body the smoke grenades and the noodles. Equip the noodles as we're gonna 
we're not gonna eat the noodles, but we're gonna throw it to distract an enemy here. And I'm equipping the cigar here is that because we need to lower our health to a point so we can uh, end up killing ourselves later in the uh, faster on the coming uh, boss fight as well. So here. I used the smoke grenade to silence my footsteps to sneak in behind that guard. And I throw that noodles that we just picked up, so... Distract the guard right in front of me, or else you're gonna get spotted by either one of them. So coming up is gonna be two guards and a dog coming up here, so we're gonna have to... First of all, we're going to throw a smoke grenade right here. He's going to come to investigate. I'm going to silence my footsteps by uh, cooking a grenade here. I'm going to throw another smoke grenade to this dog, and this dog is going to end up coughing. Which is kind of funny, actually. I never thought that dogs can cough. But whatever. So, we're going to sneak right behind them. And head to the sewers. So here, um, for marathon safety strats, I'm gonna pick up the life med. I do not need the life med, but just for the safety of this run, we're gonna have to pick it up. Yeah, if I'm doing uh, a foxhound attempt, I will not pick that up. I'm gonna just continue and drop down immediately. So, there are a bunch of doggos here as well. And... I'm actually kind of scared of these dogs, so we need to run as fast as possible. Yeah, this area is pretty much straightforward. All you need to do is just roll through the uh, hole in the wall. I'm using the R1 to adjust the camera and my crawling angle quite easily. And then we're gonna head straight to the light. So this is the sorrow, and remember that we have lowered our health quite fast, so we're gonna kill ourselves here. We're gonna get ourselves killed by drowning down. And then we're gonna use the revival pill, which is pretty much stuck in our teeth to revive ourselves. Now we're gonna get to some Kodak conversation, and then Eva's gonna tell us to go and meet her at the cave in front of the waterfall area. So, if you do not remove that transmitter back at the cell, there are gonna be enemy soldiers scouting the area. And, uh... Yeah, it's faster to remove that, but if you want to add yourself some challenge, you can go ahead and do so, but leave that transmitter off, and you're going to get rewarded by a funny cutscenes with Eva inside the cave. But we're speedrunners, we need to do things as fast as possible, so yeah. So this is where you're going to have to meet Eva, aka Past Big Mama. And she's going to give us some items as well. Um, not by much, just just a C3 explosive that she stole. So, now our goal is we need to go and destroy the Shagahod, or the base where the Shagahod is actually being kept. 
and we need to use the C3 explosive that we have and plant them at a specific spots. So here we're gonna pick up the box B here, and then we're gonna equip the pack pack, and then start uh, equipping some stuff: uh, SVD, Mosin Nagant, Sun Grenades, Mo Grenade C3. So yeah, this is all the stuff that we're gonna need. We're gonna remove the cigar, equip the cardboard box B, and we're good to go. So we're back to Grozny Grad facility again, and uh, we need to get inside the facility. And there's a faster way to do so. Here I'm gonna use the box. This guy's gonna come to investigate, and I'm gonna shoot his buddy right here. What's wrong? He's gonna come to investigate, but yeah. Apparently, Soviet soldiers do not care if there's a running box in front of them. And then we're gonna head straight to that truck and use the box inside of it. This will take us right inside the area where they keep the Shagahod in. It's much, much faster than going through the, like, slower, the other routes. So here I'm gonna shoot right there, make some noise. These guys are gonna freak out and then this guy's gonna freak out as well. He just saw a box coming in, and this guy's gonna go in and fit to investigate. So these are the fuel tanks of the Shagaha. This is where we're gonna have to use the the C3 next to. Yeah, there are some workers as well where they can pretty much seize you as well and cause an alert if you're not careful enough. And here's the last one. So, coming up is uh, Volgen 1, or Volgen, since we're only gonna fight him once. The next time we're gonna fight him on top of a shell god. So we're gonna go in and do some CQC to him. Yeah, this fight consists of two phases. The first one is gonna be here, we're gonna get closer. We're gonna grab him and then throw him right in front of us. They're gonna equip the SVD. Gonna get here, shoot, shoot, shoot. And that's the first phase. Second phase is pretty much similar, but it's gonna be a little bit tricky. Gonna get closer. And that's Volgan. So, you just noticed that I actually used a lethal weapon, and I beat him lethally. But, it's completely okay because Volgen actually does not die, so it will not count as a kill. Why that would count as a kill, so it's quite silly to, do, to think that. So now we're gonna... this is the escape sequence, and... Metal Gear is already active. So this is where we're gonna have to use the... the RPG to chip... Uh, Shagahod. HP bar really, really low, and this is where we're gonna have to use also a combination of the RPG for the Shagahan and stun grenades to take down the the soldiers as well. Yeah, we're using a stun grenade to take, the, to take these guys down. Stun grenade right here, stun grenade right there, and right there.
Alright. And now we're gonna have to wait for the Shagahot to come in. Deal more damage to it. Deal more damage with the RPG. Then we're gonna equip the Sun Grenade and wait until the sequence finishes up. So, uh, we're not going to see the Shagahot for a little bit. Instead, we're going to have to take down the enemies here. Uh, we're going to use a combination of stun grenades to take them down. Yeah, we need to throw these stun grenades at a specific spot, so we ended up knocking down these enemies. Yeah, there's another method to do this area is by using the Cold War uh, uniform and you do that by beating Vulcan um, non-lethally. But that is really, really too slow, so we're gonna do this the real way. And using the Sun Grenade is actually quite easier than you might guys think. This guy is dangerous. It's really important to take down these rocket launcher guys. So here, there's a guard at that gate. It's really important to knock him down or else he's gonna kill you. Yeah, that guy has a rocket launcher. If you do not take him down with a stun grenade, he's gonna shoot the rocket launcher and in European Extreme, that rocket launcher will end up killing you. As it does 60% damage to you. So now for the third part of the escape, which is now we have guys with uh, motorcycle following us and we have Shagahad here. So we're gonna take him down with the Mark 22 here. As you can see, I have removed the silencer, so we do not end up using the silencer ammo as we're gonna need it for the final area of the game. Nice view. So, this is where the Shagahot's gonna show up again, and this is where we're gonna have to deal some damage to it as well. Cook the RPG, and then we're gonna wait for the Shagahot to get closer. That's unfortunate. Come on, get closer. Okay, he's not cooperating. He's just getting far, far away. I can't deal too much damage to him.
that was a really, really bad shoot, Adam. So that's okay. So now we're going to have to destroy the bridge that uh, Shagahad is going to be here. I planted four C3 charges. We're going to take the C3 charges right there. Three more bombs left. Two more left. Only one more left. And then we're going to take the weapon off. Hurry. And here, uh, Eva yelling at Hurry. us. Then I'm gonna do some no scopes. So now we're gonna fight the Shagahot for real. Let's see what kind of RNG we're gonna get at the beginning of the fight. That's a good RNG. So the idea is that you want to shoot the Shagahide from back. That's the only damage that you can do to it. That was a little bit early. So, dependent on what Eva RNG is gonna do or movement, things can become quite fast or quite slow. So if you are wondering why I'm not shooting immediately, is because the Shagohod have some iframes, and you can pretty much tell what kind of iframes he have based on the sparking, the electrical sparking behind him. If it's gone, it pretty much tells you that you can deal damage to him. Right now we can see the sparking. All you have to do is just wait for it to go away, and then you can shoot again. Okay, that was not a bad first phase. So, second phase, uh, Vulcan is going to reveal himself to us. We're going to do some damage to him, shooting the threat. Alright, nice. So, let's hope he does not get iframes. And I guess he did. Yep. That is something that I don't understand. Sometimes Vulcan has some iframes. I'm going to have to wait for him. So we're gonna shoot the turret and then shoot his head. Okay, we're gonna have to wait a little bit. Yeah, this lag. Oh, really? Okay, that's side frame again. And that is Vulcan. So, uh, we're not done escaping this area as we need to continue as well with another escape sequence. There we go. So yeah, uh, the escape sequence, the bike chase, is is quite, quite long in this game. Same as before, we're gonna use some stun grenades and Mark 22 as well. Yeah, the threats. Turn 
So here we use some stun grenades to take down these guards. And there's gonna be a guard coming up here with a rocket launcher. It's really important to take him down. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, I went to first person view here to delay, to pretty much prevent any uh, lag by that screen. So we have these jetpacks, and they are annoying. Really, really annoying. It's not easy to snipe him down, so I'm trying my best here, and Hopefully I do not end up getting uh, <laughs> glitched out by the middle one because he can you can get glitched out by them and you cannot shoot him while he is on top of your head. So there's a lock coming up that we need to shoot it down with the rocket launcher. Nice shots. And this is for all the sparks. So, uh, we're still not done yet. There are going to be more motorcycle guys coming up. And they crash. Nice. So we're going to have to take them down as well. Here's more of them. Nice. They crashed as well. Nice view, by the way. Uh... Crash. And they did not. Okay, that's fine. There's gonna be a bunch of motorcycle guys right here. We're gonna have to shoot them down. There we go. Yeah, not bad, but not good either. So we're coming to the final part of the run here, and... Uh, so yeah. We crashed, and Eva is now... Uh, we need to cure her. So in the meantime, Plywood can go in and, and read some donations. Thanks. We have $10 from Troll Paco. Glad to be here again to enjoy the marathon. Good luck to all the runners and especially to Pythonicus. Putting this towards the Otacon ending in TTS. Thank you so much.
All right, thank you, Plywood. Truly appreciate it. Thanks for thank you all for all your donation. So now we're getting uh, followed by soldiers, and we need to outrun them. So I'm signaling to Eva to move in, and she moves really, really slow. So we're gonna have to wait for her. Yeah, you can see the guards coming in closer and closer. And you can see one right here coming up as well. And then we're gonna wait for Eva to come in closer to this area. And we're gonna head to the next one as well. So. At the next area, we're gonna feed Eva some noodles that she gave us earlier into the run, uh, earlier at the our second visit. So instant noodles to Eva. Let me have some more. And she liked them. So here I'm gonna shoot this guy, and then we're gonna continue normally. Signaling to Eva every time, every now and then. Oh, what? Okay, that was my fault. I shot a little bit too early. I thought I'm not gonna feel this part, but apparently I did. I was a little bit anxious, which is fine. Let me have some more. Yeah. All right. That's bad. Okay, yeah. You cannot miss shot that guy. All right. All right. All right. It's okay. It's okay. I'm going to focus. I'm not going to lie. I'm actually after because of all of this talking, I'm actually kind of thirsty, so Let me have some more. Yeah. I know you guys want to hear Eva's adorable voice. Ah, uh, really? Okay. I thought I shot him. Yeah, this part is... The problem with this part is that you need to shoot immediately. You need to shoot this that guy really, really fast and finish this area, the first, like, few guards as fast more. as possible. And it doesn't help the fact that... All right, wait, there we go. So we're gonna go in here. Yeah, just making sure to take my time. So these two guards, we're gonna take him down. And no, he's not gonna, he cannot see me because for some reason there's an invincible wall here, which you can shoot through. But enemies cannot seize through it. Yeah, so we're gonna call for Eva and wait for her to come closer. And here I'm gonna kick this uh, plant make some noise and there's a guard down there where he can hear, hear it he's gonna come in to investigate and leave this area so two more guards left so the final guard is right here so yeah Shoutouts to me, like, when I started speedrunning this game, I was on a foxhound pace, and I missed shot that guard. Ended up shooting him in his guard, and he just noticed, and 
kill my run. So Eva have fully rendered boobs, so which means we're gonna get some bad RNG. And the whole boob thing about Eva is that um, it will make the the boss behave differently on the second throw. Let's see what you're made of. Okay. Uh. So the boss, I need to CQC her every time she get seek, try to CQC uh. me. I'm using the Mosin Nagan to deal as much damage as possible. Shoot her in the head, then I'm gonna back off. Then get to her as well. CQC see her again. Two shots to the head. Knock her down. We're gonna equip the stun grenade. Then throw it on top. This will make her blind by it. And I'm gonna wait. I'm not gonna shoot. Wait. Shoot again. Knock her down. And this is where we're gonna use the stun grenade. This time I'm gonna hit her body with a stun grenade since she is in the second phase. And I'm gonna use the Mark 22 to deal damage to her. Shoot. Shoot. Knock her down again. Stun grenade his body. Uh, her body as well. And... Wait. And then one few more bullets. Shoot. And that's the boss. It appears Jaguar has left the building. Uh, I'll see what we can do, but it's not saying anything. Nope. Jaguar? Jaguar! Jaguar! Well, he did actually complete the run. He did beat the run, so we have to give congratulations to Jaguar. Uh, I believe his internet cut out. But he did defeat the boss, so congratulations to Jaguar for completing the game. He didn't actually uh, kill the boss, though. So, like, actually kill her with the Patriot. Okay, well, in the meantime, we're going to sit on an, an uh, interstitial and you guys can enjoy some music. Maybe Jaguar will come back and he can say some parting words, but we will be having, coming up, Iridescence playing Rising Revengeance. And after that will be I'm Ruckus with Katana Zero, a new game in the year 2019. Thank you all for your donations. $37 already in the first game. That's really impressive. Thank you all for your support.